Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. It's the first Thursday of the month and that means we're in the kitchen with Across the Fence. Now that we're into July, it's time to start cooking with summer fruits like strawberries, blueberries, pears, and peaches. And our guests have some great summertime treats for us today. Alongside me are Carolyn Peak from Williamstown and Deb Plumley and Lynn Jarvis from South Hero. Before Deb presents her recipes, we're pleased to announce the two winners of last month's drawing for the Elvis Presley cookbooks. They are Doris Morin from Eden and Rachel Nichols from from Castleton. Congratulations to you both and you'll be getting your cookbooks in the mail any day now. Well this month one of you lucky viewers will win this 320 page cookbook Taste of Home Annual Recipes donated and autographed by our own <laughs> Carolyn Peake. I'll let you know how you can enter for the free drawing at the end of today's program. Well, that was nice Carolyn. What a wonderful surprise. Yeah. Uh, so Deb what have you got for us? Well I found some interesting recipes to try using some different fruit combinations and I'm going to start with these plum poppy seed muffins. These muffins are chock full of juicy chunks of red plums. And I'm just gonna break one open here a little bit so you can see that they're just studded with pieces of fruit. Using only a half cup of sugar and white and whole wheat flour, these muffins are very helpful and they're great to have for breakfast or as an anytime snack. The muffins have a rich flavor from melted butter and Greek style yogurt use. Because the muffins are so moist, I suggest that when you take them out of the oven, remove them from your muffin pan and let them cool slightly on a wire rack before serving. And I find these are just as good the second day eaten as the first. So these are the plum poppy seed muffins. Now I have a viewer recipe from Mary Beth Keichel, and I hope I'm pronouncing your last name correctly, from Lake Placid. This is her blueberry tea cake. It's a luscious looking tea cake that's nice and thick and it's just studded with luscious blueberries. The flour, baking powder, butter, sugar, egg, milk, and two cups of blueberries are mixed together to form the batter. The crumb topping, is brown sugar, butter, flour, cinnamon, and mix till it's crumbly, and then it's sprinkled on the top. And you bake this in the oven until a cake tester comes out in the middle, showing that it's done. If you do find that it's browning too much, you can cover the top with some aluminum foil, just lightly tinted. And I think this would be a great summertime treat, perhaps of a glass of lemonade or maybe some tea. So I want to thank Mary Beth for sharing this great recipe with us for her blueberry tea cake. Now I found a very interesting recipe using cherries a little bit differently. And this is a fresh cherry salsa. Sweet cherries are cut in half and pitted. That takes a little bit of time. I found it was a nice thing to do outside on a picnic table in the sun. And then you add red onion, some green pepper, yellow pepper. So you get nice lots of different colors in here. Chop that together. Add some red cayenne pepper, salt and pepper, and some lime juice to taste. Let the flavors sit overnight or at least three or four hours in the refrigerator so everything blends together well. And this is great on crackers or we had it with our grilled fish and it was something wonderful to have with it. So it's something a little different and I think the lime juice cuts the sweetness of the cherries. So you get this semi-sweet flavor with a little bit of kick from the cayenne pepper. So this is a nice fresh salsa that I hope you give a try. Now, Donna Barcom from Colchester sent in her recipe for a pear cranberry crumble pie. And this is just wonderful. I happen to have some fresh cranberries on hand, so I use those in the recipe, even though the recipe called for dried cranberries. I think either one works well. You peel and slice about six pears. I found that if the pears were slightly underripe, they seem to prepare a little bit better. 
Spread those in your pan with cranberries. Add a little bit of flour, cinnamon, and sugar for the filling. And then the topping, it's this wonderful crumble of butter, oats, sugar, flour, a little bit more cinnamon. You bake this in a 365 degree oven for about 60 to 70 minutes. You may find that if the topping again starts to brown a little bit too much, just cover it loosely with a piece of foil. And then you have this wonderful pie. And I think it's going to taste just as good as it looks. So I want to thank Donna for sharing this recipe for her pear cranberry pie. Now, Carolyn, what flavors of summer fruit do you have to share oh, today? All kinds. And it looks wonderful. <laughs> yes. Well, I am going to start out with, I guess you might call it kind of an appetizer. This is chilled strawberry soup. And I have tried it. It is very good. It has apple juice, some water, uh, sugar, cinnamon, cloves, and then you take two cups of fresh strawberries and you put them into your blender and puree those. Use some strawberry yogurt and you've got a really nice cold soup to have, like I say, appetizer or maybe you just want something cool on these hot days and you could have that with some rolls or whatever. And I'm gonna just stick a little piece of mint in to be pretty. <coughs> My next recipe is a, it's a berry mini bread. I never thought of using whole cranberry sauce in a recipe, but that's what this has. And then it has blueberries to go along with it. So you've got this really nice flavor combination of blueberries and cranberries. And it's, the recipe tells you to bake it in four little pans, so you've got some to share. Down here in the front, let me see if I can finagle things around a bit. Here in the front, I have a fruity rice salad. This has, uh, it's, it's rice, I use the brown rice and it has grapes and peaches in it. And then the sauce is a yogurt and honey and cream cheese. It's got raisins and things like that. Now, I didn't try this, but I'm thinking it might taste good with some cut up uh, chicken in it too. So you might try that, and if you do, let me know how it turns out. A fruited pasta salad is my next one, and this is just full of fruits, and the, I used the colored pasta on it. It has strawberries, it has melons, uh, pineapple, just all sorts of good things that you can put into it, and it's a nice, cool, you know, you might serve it with the soup. My viewer recipe, last but not least, is from Jean McNeil of, Man of Mansonville, Quebec. And this is a strawberry cream cheese pie. I like cream cheese anything. And I can't wait to try this pie. And I'm going to see if I can, yep, it's going to fall apart on me. But you can get the general idea. Um, it is cream cheese. See, we'll just, we'll make believe this looks wonderful. Cream cheese, powdered sugar, heavy cream, vanilla, a pie shell, and a, then the pint of fresh berries to go on top. So that would be a real good ending for your dinner with these other things. Lynn. Whether it looks a little bit broken or not, it looks delicious. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I think you. it will be delicious. And thank you for that cookbook you donated for our viewers. It was, I found I had two copies of it, and I said, why not give one of them away? Well, one of you lucky viewers will win that. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, we continue to hear from many of you loyal viewers uh, from throughout the WCAXT viewing area, and I just wanted to mention a few of you again. They include Carolyn Lighton from Underhill Center, 
Myrtle Fultzum from Rotland, Diane Rivers from Fairfax, who's recently become a subscription member for our recipes, Carolyn Lamb, Orvin Johnson, Alice Munson, Weybridge, and Janet Donovan from across the lake in Plattsburgh. And please know that all your cards and notes are read and much appreciated. Now, I'm going to begin with this recipe right here. It's from Phyllis Dimmick down in Rutland. It's her zucchini relish, and she has had this recipe for, for 35 years. She got it from UVM Extension, and she still uses it. Now, I'm not gonna spend much time on it because it's really not a summer fruit recipe, but you know those zucchinis will soon be coming along in your garden. This is gonna be a great way to use up some of those zucchinis. And Carolyn, did you know that you can make strawberry jam in a crock pot? Uh, here it is with just five ingredients. It's my strawberry Riesling jam. And along with the strawberries and sugar, there's a grated apple in here, pectin, and a half cup of Riesling wine, which gives it a little kick. Uh, it keeps very well in the refrigerator uh, about three weeks in a jar like this, or if you put it in a closed jar like this, uh, it would keep a little bit longer. So I hope you'll give this a try in, in your crock pot. Now my next recipe contains two of my favorite summer fruits, cherries and blueberries, and take a look at this. Uh, and doesn't it look just great? And I can also tell you it's good for you as well. Now, did you know that cherries and blueberries contain anti-inflammatory properties and two antioxidant compounds that help improve memory, vision, and concentration? Now, I think probably all of us here will want to try this piece of this pie. Anybody here, Carolyn, come. You may as well start. Okay. <laughs> Get, help our vision and our concentration. Yeah, I told Judy I, I knew this, but I forgot it because I hadn't eaten enough blueberries and cherries. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're going to move on to um, another pie. It's from a viewer, Willie Stowe, over in Colchester. It's her custard rhubarb pie. Now my neighbors, Mark and Brenda, have the uh, rhubarb just across the street, and I had all the other ingredients right in my cupboard. They include rhubarb, sugar, flour, nutmeg, and eggs, and Willie sprinkles some uh, maple uh, sugar over the top to give that nice glaze on the pie. We thank Willie for that recipe. Now don't overlook pears in summertime cooking. We saw that delicious pie that Deb made. Well, I have some muffins here. They are little pear pecan muffins. They're easy to make, and I had, again, everything in my kitchen except the pears and the pecans, so I didn't have to go out and spend a lot of time and money to buy the ingredients. Um, these are really good. Your family and friends will like these, and they're also great for potlucks and bake sales. A nice little muffin and quite easy to make. Now, my next recipe comes from a newspaper clipping that someone sent me many years ago. This dates back to 2003, and it's from a newspaper that one, uh, as I said, one of the viewers sent in, and I've lost the name over the years, but it's from the Amanusic Times, published in Littleton, New Hampshire, the July 18 edition. It's from a column by Eleanor Gardner, and if one of you viewers would like to have this, I'll be glad to send it to you. Well, here is the recipe. It's this blueberry apple crisp. It's absolutely sinfully delicious. I wish all of you were here to try it along with us uh, right after the show is over. I'll give you a quick little look at it. You can see those apples and pears in here. And again, I really like these summertime recipes. If you have the fruit, you probably have the ingredients right in your kitchen, and they're not hard to make. Uh, the time to the cut, cut, cutting cost and the shopping time is cut down because, as I said, you have most of the ingredients right there at home. So I hope you'll give this a try. It's just delicious. And my last recipe with the 4th of July coming up on Saturday, as you can see, I've worn my patriotic shirt and I've made these red, white, and blue cheesecake bars. And it's all to celebrate our 
Independence Day coming up. Uh, a low-fat recipe with just 193 calories. Uh, you put the low-fat ingredients in a crust and decorate them, Judy, with strawberry swirls and blueberries. And isn't that a nice-looking patriotic delicious. dessert? I could <laughs> dig right in. <laughs> we have some business to get to All first. Right. Um, if you're looking to find the recipes, you can get them a couple different ways. You can go online, check out the Across the Fence website, go to uvm.edu slash extension, then click on the link to Across the Fence. You'll find the recipes on the left-hand side of the webpage. To get the recipes by mail, send $2 in a stamped self-addressed business size envelope to Summer Fruit Recipes, Box 188 South Hero, Vermont, 05486. And please remember, if you are ordering the recipes, to include $2 and a stamped self-addressed envelope. Your envelope will be used in the free drawing for the winner of the Taste of Home cookbook. Now, if you're not ordering today, you can use this address to be part of the free drawing. To enter, just send along your name, address, and phone number. Good luck to everybody. And thanks to our chefs today for some amazing recipes. They'll be back on August 6th featuring recipes using locally grown produce. And we remind you to support your local farmers markets and farm stands. Nothing is better than fresh picked. And as we say goodbye, happy 4th of July from all of us here at Across the Fence.